these rites of the gospel. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. There is one other announcement that I forgot to mention a while ago. Um, if you were here last Sunday, you know there was a couple who was burned out of their home. That the only things they had left were the clothes on the back, their dog, and one cell phone and charger. And we did our uh, blessed change uh, on behalf of helping them get back up on their feet. Altogether, the congregation gave $2,700 to help them get going. And some good members of the congregation have donated a travel trailer for them to live in uh, as soon as they can get all of that arranged and squared away. So thank you very much for being God's people and responding to this couple in the... Yeah, it's okay to do that. <laughs> now let's see if we can put this story from John's Gospel in some easier terms. Jesus has been healing people in the area around the Sea of Galilee. He's just done that miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, and crowds have now begun to follow him everywhere he goes, literally chasing him by foot, by boat, all around the sea. And when they catch up to him on the other side of the Sea of Galilee from where they last saw him, you can just see him rushing up to him, Rabbi! You left us behind. What's going on? I mean, we're here for you, Jesus. Uh, uh, we, we're big fans. Uh, see, we even have our Jesus t-shirts on. Isn't it great we found you? And Jesus looks at them and says, people, 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 you came looking for me not because you saw God at work in me and wanted to experience God's presence, but because I gave you free food for your bellies. Do not work for the food that perishes. Don't focus on the stuff of this world. Instead, he says, seek the food that endures, the things that are part of an eternal kind of life. The stuff that really matters, the real food that only I can give you. In 
other words, Jesus is telling him, folks, you're missing the point here. It's not about the bread. It's about relationship. The great I am, God, has come among you in me. Focus here. I'm the thing, the one thing you should be concentrating. And the crowd says, okay, okay, we got it. It's, it's about God stuff, right? So what does God want from us? Jesus answers, God wants you to believe in the one whom he sent to you, me. God wants you to hear me, to watch me, and learn how life is supposed to be lived. God wants you to invest your life in me. That isn't exactly what the crowd wants to hear. They're ready for more free bread and miraculous healings. They want to see somebody raised from the dead, you know. They want a show. So the people respond. Why should we believe you? Hmm. Prove to us that you were God's Messiah, the Savior. Do some magic for us, Jesus. Do another miracle and maybe then all the while forgetting that Jesus had just fed 5,000 people plus with five dinner rolls and a couple sardines. Forgetting that he had just slipped away from them in the night by walking across the water. Forgetting that he had just healed dozens of the local people from crippling diseases. They demand that he do another trick for them before they will believe that he is God's appointed one. The crowd says, after all, Moses, who was a real man from God, he made bread just appear for us every day in the wilderness, this man. How do we know you're the Messiah if you won't do what Moses did for us? Now, if I were Jesus, my blood pressure would be going through the roof. <laughs> These are the people he has come to save, the ones he's trying to show that God is with them, and they are giving him attitude to go along with their blindness. I'd be ready to say forget it and head home. Fortunately, I'm not Jesus. The real Jesus knows this crowd, knows us human beings, knows how we are by nature sinful, self-serving, and rather blind. And the real Jesus loves them anyway loves us. Amen. So he continues on. People, you're mistaken. It wasn't Moses who provided that manna, that miracle bread from heaven. It was my Father, God. And the same Father in heaven who provided that miracle bread to sustain his people in the wilderness is now giving you real bread to sustain you. The bread of life. Me. Right here and now, God is providing you with the one true bread that has come down to you from heaven. The bread that can give you that eternal kind of life right here and now. And the people still not understanding say, okay, give us some of that bread. And I can see Jesus just shaking his head. After all, he is both fully divine and fully human. He had to be getting frustrated. People, focus. I am the bread of life. I am here to fill your deepest needs, not just fill your bellies and do tricks for you. And then amazingly, he continues on and gives them a word of promise and hope. A word of gospel, in spite of them continuing to miss the point. God is truly a good and gracious Jesus had come to love them into life, to show them the way to a better life. The people just thought they'd found their magic man who could fill their bellies and help them avoid some pain. They tried to manipulate him and get the Son of God to do what they wanted. They came at him with a conditional kind of love. You know, you, you can't really say love. A, uh, a conditional 
acceptance. If you do what we want, Jesus, then we will believe. Maybe. Until there's something else we want. And you know, inside Jesus was weeping because he knew what life could be for them. And they were missing the point and settling for something so much less. As I was reading this text over this week, I began to wonder, are we those people? Are we the ones missing the point? Is being a disciple of Jesus the Christ more than just having the membership card and wearing the t-shirt? We have about 1,300 baptized members who are active here at Zion. Any given week, we have almost 500 in worship, which is honestly above the national average in terms of percentage. Of those 1,300 active members, how many would you guess come together to worship at least twice a month? Answer? Right at 208, or one out of every six active members of Zion respond to God's call to worship at least half the time. Only a third make it even once a month. We struggle every year to get enough Sunday school teachers to teach the faith to our children. With a thousand adults, we rarely have more than 40 in an adult class morning and the thing is, we're pretty normal for a Christian church of any kind today, at least in this country. Now for our guests today, and for our brand new pastor, don't let this scare you off. We have a wonderful congregation that I am so proud to be part of, and that I love dearly. At the same time, as we heard in Ephesians, maturity demands that sometimes we ask ourselves some hard questions. And yes, I know I'm preaching to the choir, seeing as you folks are the ones who are here today, right? But my question is, how do we have some serious conversations as a community of faith about what it means to be a Christian, a disciple of Jesus Christ? How do we encourage one another in our journey without becoming legalistic about it, you know? And I don't say all this to generate guilt, but to reflect on the question of the day. Are we those people in this text? Are we missing the point, chasing after bread and circuses, when we have Jesus standing here in our midst? every Sunday. Is Jesus only good for what we want from him? We want from his church? Is being a Christian just having a membership card and wearing a t-shirt? Christianity is about a relationship with Jesus, a relationship established in baptism, fed in worship and prayer, and shaped by our study together. It's a relationship that calls us to follow him in doing the kinds of things Jesus did to serve all people. It's not about us, or our wants, or our wishes. It's not about our morality, for we have no superior claim there. It's about living all of life in God's presence, in a faith community and learning to see God's presence in the face of the hungry, the sick, the stranger in our midst. If you were here this morning because you like the beauty of the sanctuary or the warmth of the people or the wonderful programs this church offers in music and youth and theater and children's ministries, that is awesome. <laughs> it really is. I'm so glad, and I hope that together we can continue to provide and even improve all of 
those things that help us in our faith. But please realize, even those good things are not what Christianity is about. Each of those is a blessing to us, and they are necessary for us, and they are good for us, like fresh bread. But that bread, the, the programs and facilities and such, is not truly what's at the core. What's at the core of Christianity is a person. Not a book, a person. Jesus. It is Christ who calls us into his presence in worship every week, not just sitting occasionally. It is Christ who bids us come aside for a while to pray constantly, not just when we want something. It's Jesus who gathers us in a community to study and ask the questions of what it means to be a Christian in this moment, in this place. It is Christ who bids us to give sacrificially of not only our wealth that he has provided, but to give of our very lives in loving service for the sake of the world. It is Christ who calls who stands in our midst today, who gives us his life and his love, even when we're hard-headed and missing the point. He loves us, just like he loved those people in that story today. It's Jesus who calls us today into relationship. He calls us again and again, day after day because he is faithful. He is the bread of life. And he loves us and wants the best for us. He's the one who knows what life can be. So come. Receive his gifts. Come and worship. Come and follow. Find a whole new life. As St. Paul said, I beg you to lead a life worthy of the call to which you have been called. And the God. Of